dear students uh, this is our ninth lecture on bioorganic chemistry and today we will start with uh, new chapter on mechanism of enzyme action and in this first lecture on uh, this chapter uh, we will discuss about basic concepts that uh, how the enzymes they act on uh, various types of uh, bioorganic reactions as we know uh, that when we use enzymes uh, the rate of the reaction increases uh, drastically and uh, in some cases uh, even uh, if we compare the enzyme catalyzed reaction with uh, that uh, any uncatalyzed reaction the rate of reaction is uh, faster of the order of 10 to power 7 to 10 to power 14 times than the uncatalyzed reactions. Uh, I have listed few of the examples where uh, you will see that uh, the rate of uh, enzymatic reaction is much much higher than the uncatalyzed reaction. For example, in the first instance, if we take the case of uh, hydrolysis of uh, alkyl phosphates, in the presence of enzyme alkaline uh, phosphatase, uh, it hydrolyzes phosphates uh, into alcohols and uh, phosphoric acid. Uh, if we compare uh, the enzyme catalyzed reaction rate and uncatalyzed reaction rate, the rate of uh, enzymatic reaction versus uh, uncatalyzed uh, reaction is 1.4 into 10 to the power 16 times faster as compared to the uncatalyzed reaction. Similarly, in the second example, uh, if we see the hydrolysis of uh, urea uh, to uh, ammonium ions and bicarbonates uh, under acidic conditions, uh, and if we use uh, the enzyme urease, then uh, rate of reaction is uh, 10 to the power 14 times faster in case of enzymatic reaction in comparison to uncatalyzed reactions. In case of hydrolysis of esters, uh, for example, if it is uh, catalyzed by chymotrypsin enzyme, the rate of reaction is 10 to the power 12 times uh, faster than that of uncatalyzed reaction. Similarly, for other reactions like uh, glycosin uh, phospho uh, phosphor uh, phosphorylation uh, to convert this into uh, glucose uh, phosphate, uh, the enzyme which catalyzes this reaction is glycogen uh, phosphorylase and uh, rate of reaction is uh, 3.2 into 10 to the power 11 times faster than that of uncatalyzed reaction. Similarly, if uh, we uh, see the phosphorylation of glucose uh, uh, in the presence of uh, ATP, uh, in the presence of enzyme hexokinase, the rate of reaction uh, in case of enzymatic uh, reaction is 10 to the power 10 times faster uh, than that of uncatalyzed reaction. So, similarly for uh, other reactions uh, like uh, oxidation of alcohols to carbonyl compounds like aldehydes and ketones, the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase uh, is 10 to the power 6 times uh, faster than the uncatalyzed reaction. And in other cases also, uh, the rate of reaction is uh, 1 into 10 to the power 7 times or 1.33 into 10 to the power 4 times faster in case of hydrolysis of uh, carbon dioxide and phosphorylation of creatinine uh, respectively. So overall, uh, what we can conclude is that uh, <coughs> rate of reaction in case of uh, uh, enzyme catalyzed reactions they are much much faster than that of uncatalyzed reactions. The uh, main uh, reason for this can be explained on the basis of uh, transition state theory and as you know that when reactions they are converted into products in all chemical reactions, uh, there is a transition between uh, these reactant and products and that transition it is called as transition state. 
and this transition state is uh, different from uh, the reaction intermediates. If we are to differentiate between uh, a transition state and an intermediate, we can differentiate on the basis of lifetime uh, of that uh, state or intermediate. For example, uh, the transition state uh, basically is a significant distortion of a bond where the lifetime of a typical transition state is of the order of uh, lifetime of a bond vibration and that is typically 10 to the power minus 13 seconds. Whereas uh, in case of intermediates, uh, they, they are longer lived with li uh, lifetimes and their lifetime is in the range of 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 13 seconds. So depending upon uh, this uh, lifetime, we can differentiate between uh, a transition state and an intermediate. Now, as far as uh, transition state theory is concerned, uh, if we compare uh, the uh, potential energy level diagram for an uncatalyzed reaction and an enzymatic reaction, there is a lot of difference between the two. Uh, when a substrate is converted to a product in a chemical reaction where uh, there is no uh, catalyst is involved. So, uh, no enzyme is involved, then uh, this is the uh, conversion of a substrate into product through this transition state where this much of uh, energy is required Tu star uh, is the transition which is involved and delta Gu, this much of free energy uh, of activation which is required for the conversion of this substrate into this product and overall reaction can be written like uh, substrate uh, is uh, converted into a transition state that is Tu star and that Tu star uh, after acquiring uh, that much of delta Gu is converted into the products. Whereas if uh, we see a reaction which is catalyzed by an enzyme there uh, the story is different here in the first step the substrate will interact with the enzyme and a stable enzyme substrate complex will be formed and that enzyme substrate complex will be converted into a transition state that is Te star and through this transition state we will get our products and enzyme will be generated back <laughs> and uh, energy level diagram for such uh, an enzymatic reaction is like this in the first step there is substrate uh, interacting with the enzyme and uh, in a stable state an enzyme substrate complex is formed and then through this much amount of free energy of activation delta G E we will get into this enzyme transition state complex and then this enzyme transition state complex will get converted into the product and enzyme will be released back. So this is the difference between an uncatalyzed reaction and this is an enzyme catalyzed reaction and you will see that the energy Te star is much lower than Tu star. Tu star is uh, the transition uh, state complex uh, in case of uncatalyzed reaction whereas Te is transition uh, enzyme transition state complex. So uh, because of this uh, lowering of uh, energy that is Te star uh, the enzyme catalyzed reaction uh, they have lower activation energy and because of this lower activation energy the rate of enzymatic reaction is much higher in comparison to the uncatalyzed reactions. Now similarly if you see over here 
the free energy of activation for an uncatalyzed reaction that is delta G u is always larger than delta G and because of this difference in uh, delta G u and delta G e the decrease in energy from this uh, value to this value is responsible for the rate acceleration in case of enzyme catalyzed reaction. So basically reduction in the activation energy uh, in case, uh, from uncatalyzed reaction to enzyme catalyzed reaction is responsible for the uh, enhanced rate of reaction in case of enzymatic reactions. Now uh, this uh, can be explained in terms of uh, dissociation constants also uh, as I have told you that uh, in the first instance uh, enzyme will interact with the substrate to give us enzyme substrate complex and then this enzyme substrate complex will be converted into a transition state enzyme complex which will get converted into the product. Uh, the uh, rate uh, reaction rate acceleration by an, an enzyme uh, means simply that energy barrier between ES and TE, energy barrier between enzyme substrate complex and this uh, transition state uh, complex is less than the energy barrier between substrate and TU. So TU star means in case of uncatalyzed reaction and because of this lesser energy barrier the rate of reaction in case of enzyme catalyzed reaction is more. Moreover the enzyme uh, will be stabilized uh, in case of transition state complex more than in uh, stabilizes the substrate uh, enzyme substrate complex. So this will be more uh, stabilized uh, state in comparison to enzyme substrate complex and that is why the enzymatic reaction will take place. And then uh, dissociation constant for enzyme substrate complex is given by this expression uh, concentration of enzyme and substrate divided by uh, concentration of enzyme substrate complex whereas dissociation constant for this uh, transition state complex can be given by uh, concentration of the enzyme then uh, uh, the uh, transition state of uncatalyzed reaction and transition state of enzyme catalyzed reaction. Now uh, the enzyme catalysis will take place if Kt is less than Ks. If Kt is less than Ks only then the value will be more than 1 and the reaction will be catalyzed by the enzyme and this is what uh, the uh, uh, transition state theory says that rate constant for enzyme catalyzed and uncatalyzed reaction they can be related to Ks and Kt and if this value is more than 1 then the enzyme catalysis will take place. Now trans according to transition state theory uh, the stabilization uh, of uh, the intermediate state that is uh, transition state will find out that how much uh, uh, rate of reaction in case of enzymatic reaction is increased and uh, favorable interaction between substrate and the amino acid residues of the enzyme that is active sites of the enzyme and substrate if there are favorable interactions then there will be a stable enzyme substrate complex and they will be responsible for the intrinsic binding energy between enzyme and the substrate and this intrinsic uh, binding energy will ensure that the enzyme substrate complex formed is if is having a favorable orientation and this intrinsic bonding energy of the enzyme substrate complex is compensated to some extent by entropy loss and this entropy loss will take place because when enzyme and substrate 
they are free to move they can uh, move uh, rotationally or translationally but when they are bound together then s there will be lesser entropy entropy will be lost and this will stabilize the enzyme substrate complex due to the binding of uh, enzyme with the substrate and the second point is the destabilization of the enzyme substrate complex can take place uh, either due to strain or distortion or desolvation or other similar effects and both these factors the uh, entropy loss and the destabilization of enzyme substrate complex will lead to enhanced uh, rate of enzymatic reaction and if, if this uh, delta gb is compensated then this will be the energy level diagram and if this is not compensated by entropy loss or intrinsic energy then the formation of enzyme substrate complex will follow this dashed line that will be your delta gb minus t delta s now how this uh, entropy loss and destabilization of a enzyme substrate uh, complex will help in enzymatic catalysis <coughs> now if you see uh, this position b here uh, the uh, catalysis enzymatic catalysis uh, will not take place as there is no stabilization of the enzyme substrate complex you can see the value of delta gb over here and delta gb or over here they are almost same so catalysis does not take place if enzyme substrate complex and the transition state of the reaction are stabilized to equal extent so here the transition state for the reaction and the enzyme substrate complex they are stabilized to the equal extent and that is why there will be no catalysis in this type of situation but if there is a difference in the stabilization between transition state and the enzyme substrate complex which you can see over here the value of uh, uh, this stabilization here it is delta gb is different than the value over here and because of this stabilization the catalysis will take place so this in this situation uh, enzymatic catalysis will take place whereas in situation b there will be no catalysis because here destabilization of the enzyme substrate complex takes place so because of these two factors loss of entropy due to binding uh, of the substrate to enzyme and destabilization of the enzyme substrate complex uh, by either of these uh, situations strain or distortion or desolvation the enzyme catalysis will take place now entropy loss as i have uh, explained earlier also that when enzyme and substrate this is substrate this is our enzyme when they are moving freely they when they are moving freely so they can undergo translational as well as rotational motion very easily and when such a situation is there entropy of the system is very high whereas when the substrate will bound to the enzyme then such type of uh, motion translational or rotational motion they will be restricted and because of the restriction in the uh, motion of these uh, enzyme and substrate the entropy of the system will become lower and uh, this is what known as entropy loss in case of enzymatic reaction and uh, loss of entropy uh, will stabilize uh, the reaction in terms of enzymatic catalysis similarly desolvation effects they uh, will also destabilize uh, uh, the complex for example if substrate uh, is uh, solvated by uh, the solvent molecule like water then interaction between uh, these is not possible and after the desolvation has taken place 
the entropy loss will also be there because of the desolvated enzyme substrate complex. So desolvation of the charged groups on the substrate uh, upon binding in the active site will lead to the destabilization by strain or distortion. Uh, then electrostatic destabilization uh, when a substrate uh, enters the active site the charged groups may be forced to interact unfavorably with charges of like signs resulting in electrostatic destabilization for example you can see over here this enzyme active site they that is also a negative uh, negatively charged ion whereas the substrate active site is also having a negative charge so we know that similar uh, charges they will repel each other and this will lead to electrostatic destabilization and uh, because of this uh, the strain desolvation and this electrostatic destabilization all these factors they will increase destabilization and energy of the enzyme substrate complex therefore will be raised and uh, this uh, raising of energy will increase uh, uh, this will be summed up in terms of delta gd that is free energy of destabilization and uh, because of this the transition state uh, is not under uh, any such type of uh, destabilization whereas enzyme substrate complex is under such type of uh, destabilization and uh, this will lead to uh, the formation uh, lead to the uh, increase in rate of the reaction in case of enzymatic reactions then similarly uh, we have transition state analogs uh, uh, these uh, uh, analogs they are stable molecules uh, which are chemically and structurally similar to a transition state and uh, these molecules they will bind more strongly uh, than a substrate uh, and more strongly than the competitive inhibitors also uh, therefore uh, there will be a change in the transition state for example if we uh, are to convert say l proline into d proline uh, the transition state involves uh, this type of uh, planar structure and uh, this pyrrol 2 carboxylate if you compare the structure of pyrrol 2 carboxylate with this transition state they are almost chemically and structurally similar so that means this compound is chemically and structurally similar to the transition state and studies have shown on a series on in inhibitors of proline resumes that this pyrrol 2 carboxylate this bounds to the enzyme 160 times more tightly than L proline. So this can act as a an analog for this transition state. Another example uh, of uh, uh, transition state analog is yeast aldolase reaction. So uh, this phosphoglycolohydroxamate, uh, if you see this uh, compound, this is structurally similar to this compound, in diolate and this in diolate is the transition state intermediate where dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into fructose 1,6-diphosphate with the removal of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and because this is structurally similar to this this can act as a transition state analog and it has been found that this uh, compound is 40,000 times more uh, tightly bound to the enzyme in comparison to the substrate. Then uh, third example is uh, calf uh, intestinal adenosine deaminase reaction. So here if adenine is to converted into inosine 
the transition state intermediate is this one and it has been found that this hydrated form of pure uh, nucleoside if you see this this compound and this transition state intermediate the structure is almost similar only difference is that here you are having hydrogen and here we are having the amino group and because of the structural similarity this will act as a transition state analog for this type of conversion so this will bound more tightly to the enzyme in comparison to the substrate so uh, basically transition state analogs uh, they are approximations of uh, transition state itself and they will never bind as tightly as would be expected for the true transition state and uh, these uh, analogs they are stable molecules and uh, they cannot be expected to resemble a true transition state uh, too closely so, but they can uh, act uh, in place of these transition state intermediates thank you very much